did not know why we stand on the ground and why we did naturally float off into the sky. Why when you kicked or threw something, it didn't fly off forever. And on a larger scale, why there are tides in our seas? Or why the moon revolved around the earth? Or why the earth and the other planets revolved around the sun? The ancient Greeks thought that the planets and the stars followed a natural motion and that they were a part of their god's realm. Most people in the western world thought this until the 17th century. Legend has it that in 1666, Isaac Newton was sitting under an apple tree when an apple fell on his head. We didn't think about the concept of gravity. Why did the apple fall on his head? Why did it just stay in the tree? Why did it not just float off into the sky? Isaac Newton laid the grammar to determining that there are some natural phenomena whereby one object is attracted towards another object. What was this natural phenomenon called? We call this phenomenon gravity. What do scientists now know about gravity? All objects in the known universe are influenced by gravity. The law of universal gravitation says that every object attracts every other object. With a force that is directly proportional to the product of each object's masses, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two objects. Stated mathematically, F equals G M1 M2 divided by D squared, where F is a gravitational force, G is the universal gravitational constant, M is an object's mass, and D is the distance between the two objects. Scientist Henry Cavendish later found a reliable measurement of this constant when he calculated it to be 6.7541011 newton square meter per square kilogram. Nowadays, scientists have calculated this constant to be more like 6.67259. Anyways, back to the formula. In other words, the larger the mass is, the larger the gravitational force between the objects. Also, the further away you go from the object, the weaker the gravitational pull between the two objects is. One thing to note from this formula is that distances are based on the center of the mass, center of gravity, so that even though I may be standing on the surface of the Earth, I am still at quite a distance from the center of the Earth, or around 6,400 kilometers, or 3,980 miles. An object like an apple that is being pulled towards the Earth has a force that is called its weight. We usually measure this weight in grams or pounds. I weigh 49 kilograms on Earth, but since the gravitational pull on the moon is different than that on the Earth, I could actually weigh only 20, 20 kilograms on the moon. A lot has happened since Newton and Cavendish. Scientists now think that there are four known forces of nature. 1. The electromagnetic force, otherwise known as magnets. 2. Two forces that operate at the atomic level, called the strong force and the weak force. And finally, gravity, the weakest of the four known forces of nature, but is considered the most dominant. Why? Because it can hold galaxies together. Gravity is what holds the universe together by pulling all objects with mass towards each other. Without gravity, Earth and the other planets would be floating around randomly in space. It also keeps bodies in orbit around the Earth, such as the Moon. But if all physical bodies with mass are attracted towards another physical body with mass, why don't they go in a straight line towards the other object and therefore collide? This is because the object is turning on its center of gravity at a certain velocity to keep them from hitting each other. This is one way of the cancel of the effects of gravity on these objects. And the effects of gravity is by placing objects in free fall. If you go back to the law of universal gravitation, you would think that when you drop two objects with different mass from the same height, the heavier objects would land on the ground first. But even Galileo Galilei saw that in the 16th century, that when two objects with different mass, at the same time and at the same height, it will touch the ground at the same rate of acceleration. Why? It was believed that because of these because these objects are attracted towards the center of the Earth due to their gravitational pull, they will fall a different gravitational force, but they will fall at the same acceleration regardless of their mass since acceleration is measured by the following formula, A equals F divided by M, or acceleration is equal to the gravitational force divided by the object's mass. So a rubber ball's gravitational force would be greater than a crumpled piece of paper, but the ball's mass would also be greater, plus the acceleration that both bodies would fall would even now and be the same. We can see the same phenomenon with other objects of different mass. However, scientists are careful to point out that this only works in a vacuum, since air resistance would come into effect on Earth. In the real world, you might see the lighter object hitting the ground later than the heavier object, because the air of its own mass would hold the lighter object up more than the object heavier than it. 
Let's see what happened here to test your understanding of gravity. Here we are at a road called the Anti-Gravity Road. You can find these roads in different places in the world, such as Oman or South Korea. Watch what happens to our car. Notice how his car appears to be going uphill, even though our driver has set the car in neutral. Why is that? Actually, in reality, this road is an optical illusion. It is called an anti-gravity road, but in fact, the road is like any other road that is going downhill. Depending on where you are standing, the road appears to be going uphill, but in fact it is not. The car is being pulled down a hill as we would expect it to, under a force of gravity. I just want to add that Albert Einstein later came up with a revolutionary tweak in Newton's theory of gravity. In his general theory of relativity, he found that gravity was not a force as Newton claimed, but it was a result in curvature of a concept called space-time that was caused by an uneven distribution of mass in the universe. What does this mean? Well, his fear would require a whole other video. Let's just say for now that his theory explained why why light bends when passing near massive objects, or why clocks raised high above the, the ground spin faster than on the surface of the Earth. These observations could not be explained by under Newton's law of universal gravitation. Why should we care about gravity? Why is it so important? The concept of gravity is so important because it plays a key role in our lives. It helps explain why we remain on the surface of the Earth and how scientists were able to send satellites and rockets into space from the Earth. This concept explains how the Earth revolves around the Sun, enabling us to get sunlight, which is vital for life. Gravity also plays a key role in the history of the universe. With no gravity, there would be no planets, no solar system, no galaxies, and no universe. Basically, there would be no life and we wouldn't exist. Let's sum up what we have learned. Question 1. What two factors in an object, other than the concept of a gravitational constant, are important for understanding the law of universal gravitation? A. Mass and distance. B. Weight and distance. C. Acceleration and distance. D. Size and weight. Or E. Space and time. Question 2. True or false? Gravity is considered the most dominant of the four known forces. Question 3. In a vacuum, two objects of different masses fall at the same rate of what? And finally, question 4. Why is gravity so important? A. It keeps objects on Earth from floating into space. B. It explains why the Earth rotates around the Sun. C. It explains why light bends near massive objects like the Sun. D. None of these reasons. Or E. All of these reasons. Answer question 1. The correct answer is A. The law of universal gravitation can be summed up by this mathematical formula, F equals G M1 M2 divided by R squared, where F is a gravitational force, G is a universal gravitational constant, M is an object's mass, and D is the distance between the objects. However, bear in mind that under Einstein's new theory of gravity, gravity comes not from this notion of a force, but a kind of warping of space and time. Answer question 2. Gravity is considered the most dominant of the four known forces because it is so powerful it can, it can even hold galaxies together. Answer question 3. The answer is acceleration. In a vacuum, two objects of different masses fall at the same rate of acceleration because acceleration is measured by the gravitational force of an object divided by that object's mass. And finally, answer question 4. The answer is E. Gravity is important for all the reasons mentioned. Without it, we in the universe would not exist. If you got three or four out of four, well, you may be the next Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. If you got less than three out of four, well, maybe you should watch this video again. If you want to learn more about this concept, you can do any of the following. Read the Newton's biography in the Marvel Science series, or watch movies like Star Wars, Birds of the Galaxy, Let's see what scenes are in the middle of school.